what would the architecture roadmap really look like in, in the mid to long term? What are the things do you think we're going to try to pivot towards more now and, and how will it affect us in the roadmap? So, I mean, let, let me start because clearly this is, this is featured in the picture I threw, threw together over the weekend. Look at, you know, tech and process and perhaps um, compliance and things like that in turn. If you look at tech, you know, the current focus is probably making sure there's enough VPN capacity, making sure you've got enough equipment. So do you need a whole bunch of new laptops? Do you need webcam? It's that kind of VPN connection. Is that working? Is it having problems? And that's a lot of what we're doing at Tanium is helping our customers right now with, can you offload any traffic off that VPN to make it perform better for business applications? Can we help you find out what kit you have? So there's a great story in the US of a, of a, of a medical firm that we've helped. We help their doctors identify where they could start doing remote video-based appointments by identifying all their webcams across tens of thousands of computers you know, very, very quickly. So within a day, we're able to give them that sort of insight. So those are the sorts of things we're doing to support our customers. If you move from that kind of immediate tech kind of crunch point, the next sort of thing is going to be, what is this doing to my channels? You know, all of a sudden, my contact center, pro pro maybe almost zero if you've had to shut your contact center. You know, I know there's one um, food supplier who's saying, don't call us. So that's going to be driving a lot more traffic to, to websites and, and maybe mobile apps. And perhaps if you've already got a cloud-first architecture that's nicely elastically scalable, which I'm sure Luke can talk about in a bit, no, no, you don't need to sweat because that thing's just going to you know, expand and contract accordingly. But the reality for most organizations is they're still very much on the early phases of their cloud you know, and digital transformation journey. And, and therefore, some of these things are and right now probably experiments. You know, um, so Perhaps they're pilots or they're prototypes. Uh, and some of those things are going to need to be you know, revisited and dusted off and, as you said earlier, Petra, about start, stop, continue, some of those sort of moves to digital transformation are perhaps being accelerated to that kind of next step uh, of architectural remapping. It's going to be, right, let's just a review where are where is technology creaking, where are processes, you know, not clear, so we're going to need to define some business processes so people know what's expected of them working remotely or working in new uh, contexts, maybe retraining required. You know, if I'm, an, I'm an architect and I'm going to ask to work in a distribution centre, I'm going to need to be reskilled quite rapidly to do that. A bunch of things around kind of culture and, and, and mental health around kind of working in this in this new world. So, Ryan, you may want to may want to talk to some of the marketing and sales channel sort of points, and I'm sure others will have other other pieces. But yeah, what, what do others think? Yeah, I think portfolio rationalization. What does my portfolio look like right now? Uh, what were the things that I think are not going to go forward, given that they potentially have to do with footfall or they have to do with, with, with technologies that I don't need right now? So what are the projects I'm going to stop? What are the ones that I would want to continue and build further on? And what is it that I need to start new? But also, I probably then need to take into account that because of things like footfall, has gone, my cash flow has gone down, my income has gone down, uh, you know, I, I might not have the same resources to do it with. Plus, they aren't in the right place. They might not have the skill set to do it with. And I don't have uh, access to, to a market or people that I can pull in. From an architecture perspective, I'm like, how do I provide organizations with models on how to understand exactly which capabilities to develop and how quickly can I organize people processing the information around those and understand what the dynamics are between them and, and, and pull them together. So I can rationalize that portfolio really quickly. Can I, can I add to this? We will get out of our caves. <laughs> there will be a day when we can go outside again. <laughs> What I have been thinking a lot about is something that we're engaged with quite a number of our customers, partners, which is all about helping them take approaches to, to modernizing monolithic architectures and these big gnarly applications that are very hard to break down and come up with the right approach to do so. And I have been thinking that, you know, how can these guys pivot? Mm. They need to, They really need to up their game a little bit and think of different approaches so they can pivot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to add on top of what Andy started, I think that there are three angles of that, those transformations and all those issues in midterm. First one regards this asynchronous work. After that agile, lean transformations, uh, right now the reality actually started to confirm where that happened truly and where those processes were applied correctly and self-organized teams are able still to work efficiently towards common goal, even though they are working remotely, everyone from, from their home. 
From the other hand, uh, hand, we are hearing quite a lot from the customers that entire efficiency of delivery collapsed due to the fact that either Agile was not introduced correctly or uh, overall principles of the corporations are much more headed towards micromanagement concept calls, which are actually killing entire focus and execution of, of the tasks. So a synchronous way of working, having children playing behind you uh, may be an answer here. What not to do in the era where everyone are advising what to do, and it's not always right. The second fact, those cloud systems, transformation of the technology and monolithic applications. Mm. We are seeing large grow of small companies that are offering five, seven days transformation from the offline to online business. So we will create your web shop or something similar just to keep your business alive on the surface. Uh, I've got one fun story where actually one of our retail customers decided to push everyone from the sales and the account team towards online channels to generate uh, new potential prospects, leads, and selling points. And actually that resulted quite well for them because the revenue increase was above 40%. So these digital channels, probably Ryan will touch on, uh, are expanding heavily and this is a new way of doing things. While the transformation of the technology behind needs to be revised. A lot of companies uh, claim that they finished the transformation and that was a while ago or they are in the middle. So now is the time where uh, they have to step back and see from one hand, what is the portfolio and what we really need to transform in order to survive and where to cut the cost and yeah. what kind of the talent, skills, capabilities and velocity at company we do have and where we could get someone to, to support. And with remote work uh, in midterm, it's again quite difficult because you have to go through all those planning sessions, strategic planning and tactic planning, where it's really difficult to drive some of the changes and common mindset across organization. And first part in midterm, how to pivot towards new business model and revenue streams to keep the cash flow or generate new one. So those are the three points that I'm seeing and cons uh, consulting with the customers currently. So, so Luke, one of the things that someone raised to me was they wonder whether cloud costs are going to go up because, you know, physical tin is, is going to be very difficult to service. So obviously it's very early days. Um, but um, do you think that's a possibility that the, the cloud providers uh, it, might increase their costs for storage? So it's already happening only to do the fact that if you want to run, for example, data or machine learning instances on spot instances over AWS, there are none. Everyone no, no, stop, no stop. No. no. No, schedules are changing very rapidly. The capacity on the spot instances is very low, so you are not able to hire any of these. So you have to run with classical workloads, where some of the types of the instances are also melting down quite rapidly, it's, and it's very hard to start new machines. So the data center's velocity is stopping here uh, from actual scalability, proper scalability. Will that in long term affect the pricing and rise of the price? I don't think so. Uh, at least I'm not seeing across Azure GCP and AWS aim for that for now. They are rather trying to lower down the costs and bring additional free tier to the customers to keep the, their cash flow in place and maybe reduce or postpone some of the costs. But I guess it's fair to say those that have embraced cloud and, and like I was saying earlier, the elastic kind of... Um, capabilities of cloud are, are, are probably in a better position right now than those that have a rather brittle architecture. Oh yes, even in cutting down the cost, they are able to quickly shut down what mm -hmm. is not required. And yes, we are observing that a lot against the companies that are still suffering on on prems data centers with monolithic applications, which are currently not scaling, not secured, and not easily transferable towards the cloud. So it's really hard to transform the business. So this is probably uh, an yeah. event that's helping business cases, Petra, right? For for doing things. Yeah, um, I, I think one of the things that comes to my straight away is, 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 is the divestment in the activities that you don't do anymore and the people that you have aligned to those uh, parts of the business 
and your operating cost as a direct result of that and the duplication of operating cost in setting up new models, which will basically be a massive draw on your cash flow. So I think that's that's going to be a big problem. So so even though I totally agree with moving to 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 cloud, it is a, a additional cost that uh, potentially hasn't been foreseen, especially not in smaller organisations. So I think large corporations, absolutely everybody was on the road to transformation. But even the organisations that I've encountered, it was still pretty haphazard. Even though everybody was saying they were doing massive digital transformations, I don't think many organisations knew how to effectively transform. And now that they're being pushed, I think it's a bit that I see with with uh, with Agile. We mentioned Agile and, and the wrong implementation of, of Agile. And I've always said to people, no, Agile is not chaos. Agile is actually quite a structured discipline. And in order to do fast-moving transformation, you actually need transparency. Transparency requires structure and structure of information. So to have insight, to have transparency of information will allow you to actually move fast. It's not the, oh, we'll do agile and, <laughs> and make, make things move. And so, so not on, and most organizations do not know where they spend their money. They do not know what the cost is of their current operating environment. And when they have to move to new, you know, more innovative structures that they hadn't invested in or didn't know how to move yet to yet, that's going to be just an additional burden on all of that. Uh, so I think, I think governments are going to have to, you know, play quite a large role in this, in the support as well. So we haven't really touched on that a lot, but I think there's going to be a lot of uh, support required from the tax perspective, from the regulation perspective on on helping organisations transition to these new uh, mm. environments. I think that's something that needs to happen in that midterm as well. It's a really, really interesting point you made about kind of what do you do yourself versus you know, perhaps look to a partner to do for you. And that was, that was another thing I called out on the pitch, which is, do you need new partnerships or new uh, new channels? Um, so your, your point is actually, yeah, if you have a big monolithic system that's geared around retail and you need to all of a sudden pivot to online, it's going to be a lot quicker and perhaps more cost effective to go and find you know, an e-commerce solution that's off the shelf that you can then just go and brand and, and, and perhaps import your inventory into than, you know, a, a massive great big exercise to pivot your... You know, existing systems to cloud. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess my some of my point was for for building in some of the non-functional requirements that often as architects we get very frustrated that people overlook. Right, they're 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 fixated on getting the business outcomes, which of course we're all, we're all, we're all for, but they want them like now and sometimes at the expense of the other non-functional requirements like security, like you know high availability, um, disaster recovery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know, in in some in, in some quarters, I wouldn't be surprised if there are many. Not right now because it's a it's a very difficult time. But some people may look back and go, well, this this actually pr- provided a a um, an example of why you need contingency planning and why you need um, disaster recovery and, and and all these various sort of things that often businesses just go, that's a cost. I don't like don't like the look at that cost. I'm not going to pay for it. Um, so that that for me is something I think perhaps yeah. have a longer term impact. It's a really good theme. It's a really good theme actually. Even before. This coronavirus uh, hit, you know, something Wojtek, our CEO, has been saying for some time is that technology just moves so fast. We all know this, right? It's, it's, how can CIOs have all the answers, right? It's, he really believes they need more help, can't have all the answers to all of these questions. So they're going to need more help. Yes. Yeah. And I think I think it, it, it actually I totally agree with you. But I th- I also think that architects don't necessarily do themselves any favors. <laughs> we, do, we do do have a tendency to go into into theory, into potentially models, and so on. And I think we need to become faster. We need to start looking at what do we need to know now it's about the situation to make appropriate decisions and deliver immediate value. There is no point in building monolithic you know, sources of data. We, we just need to be fast. We need to be able to provide insight that is relevant, that allow the organisation to make decisions now. 
Uh, I'll just make a quick reference, and and he'll probably thank me for it. <laughs> but there's there's somebody who did Cherben uh, Vida. He does a book on um, chess and and the art of architecture, and and he says, look, even the masters of chess didn't look more than two to three uh, steps ahead because the, the amount of permutations on the chessboard are too many to consider. And therefore, we need to understand, you know, how we can make decisions fast and how we can get the right information, the relevant information, the contextual information in place fast so we can make the right decisions or allow organisations to make the right decisions and give the right recommendations. Sorry, that killed the conversation. No, 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 no. It was, it was very, I think it was so <laughs> insightful. That everyone is now processing what you just said. Yeah, no, yeah just... the spot's complete true. <laughs> <laughs> You've nailed this. <laughs> oh, the world is no, 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 but it, I think it, it is true. And I think I think there are two two ways. I think it's the bimodal stuff. So there is the stuff that we need to do. That is foundational. And I think what I mean, that when I wrote down yesterday, when I talked about Perfect Storm and the things that we need to do, but we, you could talk about Black Swan and we have we have that, that event that has basically profoundly changed the world. However, we have several things. We have digital transformation, as in the things we want to change fast. We have the things that sit underneath it, the readiness of the technical infrastructure to accommodate that digital transformation, which is a foundational piece. I think it transcends companies and organizations. I think organizations need to start collaborating and understand what it means to utilize a common infrastructure that will probably serve the world, not just their company or serve the world. And that's the same for what I see happening in the global supply chain. I think we will, uh, all these companies that have their own supply chains, I think we'll be starting using one single global supply chain where we need end-to-end -end transparency that is built upon that infrastructure that we can all tap into. Uh, I think those are all going to be commodities that we need to start building as a world, not as, a, as, a, as just enterprises. We all need to tap into that. And, and it starts with us understanding that difference between the services on top of that versus versus what we what we need to build as a foundation and how yeah. we contribute to that. And then what's the interface between, as in how do we plug and play into that? What's that integration layer in between? I think that's that requires, in order to make that happen, we need to have regulation that's flexible enough to support people, to support, you know, as I said, flexible workers. We, we talked about Brexit. Well, Brexit was the biggest complaint was we're going to lose all this knowledgeable workforce. I'm thinking we've just got it back because we've just transcended border in online world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so whatever we did, <laughs> we've just we've just retrieved. So so I think there is, as as as, as Luke said, massive amounts of opportunities coming out of that. There is, but there is there is also things that we haven't considered and that are going to hit us massively because there are always winners and losers aren't there aren't yeah there? I mean, but, but when i was hearing you talk and i and i hate to do the whole and you can you're well within your rights to shout buzzword bingo at me in response to what i'm about to say but um i've been thinking for a long time that supply chains and and, and various sort of kind of foundational pieces uh to deliver that transparency and that collaboration uh, and I know there are many organisations looking or, or this already are looking at applying things like blockchain, and this is where you can throw yeah. blockchain yeah. bingo at me. No, I, absolutely. I think this, it's... It's the right, probably the right answer, but it requires collaboration. It's it's only going to work if you have networks of, 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 of folks. You can't... I, I get so cross when I see people talking about using blockchain within their organisation. It's like you've just completely missed the point. I'm Unless you're there. a humongous <laughs> organisation... I don't know, um, then, then uh, let's do McDonald's or you know, something, someone ginormous that has some franchise model going on and has some degree of, you know, trust thing to sort out. So you know, I think you know, this may open pe some people's eyes to that systemic change we need to make. The other thing that occurred to me when I heard you talking was, uh, you know, isn't it, I think it's true that governments are, ha are way behind on so many levels of what the new digital world means for society. <laughs> Uh, and therefore, will this finally be a chance for the government to go right as we emerge from from this? And of course, this will take time. But you know, where 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 are, have we not protected people? Where you know, where are there folks that are vulnerable to the new uh, digital you know, economy? Um, and where do we need better regulation? And, and to your point, Petra, are there some just some foundational pieces that actually 
you know internationally we need to be cooperating more on um you know and that's what i that's kind of keeps what keeps me hopeful in all honesty is that we will find as i said in the article last week we will find ways to be you know more collaborative uh, more 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 um you know, more resourceful and more adaptive and, and hopefully kinder and, and more supportive of each other as, as a society. But, you know, um, I guess the reality is, you know, there'll, there'll be some, some good bits and some bad bits. And as I say, there'll be winners and there'll be losers, won't there? That was not where the world was going, was it? I mean, if we look at China, if we look at Huawei and the restrictions of, of using their technology. But if you look at, you know, just, just look at China, building a, a, a hospital, in the speed with which they did that. But I think that, that the cultures are different and, and the way we can mobilise people is different. But I think we have to get governments to start understanding how, how we can create more trust and transparency at that level so that we can make use of the technology advances that are happening. I mean, that touched to that point I said earlier about will this cause people to retrench and become more local or... Will people, uh, uh, and maybe it'll be different in different sectors, like in the tech sector, we're already used to using the technology that we're doing now to make to make this happen. F farming and sort of manual labour and various other things, it's a very different situation, right? Yeah, no, I think um, I, some really, really fantastic points were raised there. I think there were so many things there and we haven't really got time to go into it now, but it's almost like the, the sales and marketing that we're doing at the moment here is a mechanism of what you're talking about um, in terms of moving from short to midterm in our thinking, I think what would be really good as well is, is to talk about what would we want to discuss on the next episode of this series? Um, what didn't we touch on that you would like to? And also, if we were to, to come back in two weeks, how would our opinion have potentially changed? I will pick up this time. Um, from my perspective, it was a very useful conversation and I would like to, to participate in two weeks' time in the next recording due to the fact that the situation will evolve. Mm -hmm. For now, we are still in that crisis mode and we have to find quick solutions that will deliver the value and we have to start thinking two steps ahead what kind of the evolution on architect's methodology site we have to take in order to provide the best support for the teams and for the businesses. The true opportunity is just shaping there. So Oliver mentioned that the technology was always somehow between the borders, between the teams and companies. But the true fact is that we are also somehow entering the new era of uh, distributed environments, uh, unified standardized platforms that are jo joining the, the businesses together towards common goal. So this means also openness towards the data sharing and how to do that in a structured and safe way, which for me would be a quite beneficial topic to discuss for next time. By the way, I've just spotted, just, just as a slight aside, that you're wearing your lanyard. Is that your, is that your corporate work pass that you've got around your neck? Is that, is that part of your routine to make you feel like you're going to work by putting your lanyard yeah, on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Small like ritual. Very good. Very, Very good. good. <laughs> I think it's. It, I think Luke uh, made a point. I, I think it's, a, it's. It's been a great discussion. It's really highlighted a lot of stuff for me. I, I think the things I, I'll be focusing over the next couple of weeks is around you know what services will companies need to help them transform and see how we can do those remotely. I mean, I've worked in the last you know, ten years for over fifteen companies and and come up with models that have helped me accelerate. Whereas in the past, the business model will take, you know, months. And now we're looking at weeks to be able to help people change. Um, so that's where I am. Um, for me, this is a great way of understanding the troubles or, or the issues that are really servicing in organizations and see how I can, I can respond to those. So I, I'd be great to participate, but I do so also think there needs to be a bit of a, uh, a churn as well. You need to keep this uh, fresh and, and alive with new insights and, and, and having five people or the same people talking about the same subject all the time is not going to help. No, no, no. We'll, 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 but, we'll, I've, yeah, I've already had quite a few people reach out, which is, you know, and, and anyone else, actually a good point to say, anyone watching this recording, you know, by all means, if, if you've liked this conversation with Anna, I echo the, the, what I've said. It's been a really interesting um, chance to exchange uh, ideas and views on, on where things are get, where things are and where things might lead and, and absolutely open invitation to, to folks um, to, 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 to join and I've, I've yeah I've had a couple of people already reach out which is great um, 
So yeah, so for me, I think it's continuing to think about how, as an organisation and, and as an individual, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll pivot of focusing on what, what, what can I do to support um, Tanium, Tanium's customers, uh, and, and others, uh, uh, other architects uh, out there. What what can I do to help? So you know, if, if anyone wants support, by all means, you know, reach out. I'm very happy to have a chat and, and kick ideas around. But yeah, no, I look I look forward to getting together with hopefully with, with Jez as well and, and and others. So will you be putting up some places where we could share some of our thoughts and yep. and, and some of the models that potentially could help others? So the so the LinkedIn group is is very much the place for that. We will uh, we'll certainly be putting together an, ar- an article or two. The idea is, the idea of architect tomorrow is it's yeah a place for folks to share share um, thoughts and materials, um, and probably also reference other places. Like I know uh, Petra, you and I are, are active in BCS, and that's in fact how how, how we met. So you know perhaps signposting also to other other, other organisations or, or or other things. It's open for folks to get involved with. I think it's been a great session. Thank you. As I said before, we will emerge out of our caves. It seems a bit surreal at the moment. Well, fashion will be different. Everyone's hair will be different. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I need to do something now. I, I, and I look forward to, uh, you know, tuning into this conversation in two weeks' time because I'm sure it'll be, you know, the world might be totally different. Fascinating times. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, yeah. if you want to get involved and you're watching this and it- and you want to be a part of the conversation, then please re- reach out to Oliver and I and join the LinkedIn group. And, and we would love to have you in one of the episodes. Great stuff. Well, it feels like that's a good place to close. So thanks very much, everyone. I'm, I really appreciate your time. I do massively appreciate your uh, your contribution. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Bye. Cheers.